I am Netmuva Sidan. In the first act of the Botany Corporation's history, we covered the history of A, Carmen, Sephiroth, and a little of Angela. In the second act, I shall be covering the in-game events. We've already covered the history of the Sephiroths in the Lair Law videos. After a countless number of cycles, X, a manager with no knowledge of his true origin, was welcomed into the Bosme Corporation by Angela, his AI advisor and secretary. AIs with names are rare, and she is one of the best, as the Bosme Corporation is one of the wings of the world, partly because she can pass for human with her long, light blue hair. Unfortunately for her, she's unable to leave the facility and go outside. But she can go anywhere within it. She demonstrated her willingness to lie when she described her hair colour as that of the morning sky after the rain and thus her voice was that of the wisest person in the world, and her face was that of the person with the most beautiful smile. She later admitted that it was a joke, and that there was no such person in real life. <laughs> yeah, of course there isn't. Much I... Much like a psychopath that isn't self-serving scum. I mean, how mythical is such a person? <sighs> Quite very. Because those two qualities contradict each other. I mean, a psychopath with <laughs> any form of concern for those other than themselves. <laughs> Dream on. <sighs> anyway, let's move on. Her appearance had been made to be attractive to as many people as possible. If she provokes that in humans, she's working as intended. She's also more efficient than humans when it comes to multitasking. The best in most areas, doing the work of several dozen people at once, who probably lost their jobs because of her. That's nothing new. <sighs> Much like weavers who lost their jobs when machines took them. She says that she feels sorry for them. Well, we know the first truth, which also applies to psychopaths. So we know what's not to do. As in trust them. She is self-proclaimed as his most trusted AI, X's perfect partner. With that and other functions... She is able to imitate human emotions closely. Not an easy task, as they're unpredictable and complex. Enormous efforts were made to create her. New algorithms and features were developed. Writing a new chapter in the history of AI in order to serve the company, she then spoke of abnormalities and how they generated power. Also that they're improving their power harvesting methods. With systems constantly being updated. In fact, when he arrived, that had recently happened. Yeah, clearly bureaucracy has not slowed down this company. Yeah. In some places, bureaucracy slows things down to a snail's pace, 
where it can often take days at times to get through certain things rather than <sighs> this is all to supply power to keep pace with technological advancement and the increasing consumption rates. She hid her irritation regarding her lack of patience well. The other AIs are also mentioned, along with an encyclopedia that starts as empty, but he would fill them in time. Understanding the abnormalities is key to his role as manager. That was day one. As the days passed by and the departments expanded, Angela said many things to X, such as the abnormalities were always there, but had only recently been noticed. Their presence generating fear and that the future is inevitable, but undecided. That their harvesting technologies could be the salvation of humankind. I'd say mankind, but Canada might have a problem with that term. Regardless, it could change the future, hence the motto. She also spoke of the number three being a powerful number, referencing genies or Jin, as they're otherwise known. She knew that growth was a priority. As for what X wanted, whether it be prosperity, where she'd support him in order to reach that goal, or spiritual maturity, where she'd failed to comprehend this as it was considered unnecessary data. She monitored X's reaction, asking how he felt after increasing energy outputs. His possible reactions included being proud, but grim and alerted, to unsure. That one annoyed her as it deviated from her expectations. Yet, yeah, she's certainly irritated when that happens. She considers it worthy of celebration when someone dies within the facility. Not bothering to hide that more will follow as the company grows on their sacrifices and that they should feel proud of this, even toasting with champagne with Cheers for the deceased! To remember their noble sacrifices. <sighs> yeah. Like those that will work to death to build St. Petersburg. Or convicts for often petty criminal acts rebuilding the cities in the southern states after the American Civil War. <sighs> sacrifices. Whoever made that joke should either stick to their day job or find one if they don't have one already. <sighs> yeah, it annoys me. As a sacrifice is giving up the valued, not the worthless. Worthless being what life is to <sighs> those in charge of that city that was mentioned by a number of individuals. <sighs> yeah. It's a miracle there's anyone living there at all. As it doesn't matter how large the birth rate is, the death rate would probably be higher I can understand why Carmen wanted to find a cure for the disease of the soul that was infecting everyone. At least as far as she was aware. <sighs> because doing nothing would lead to humanity
eventually dying out. And she's the kind who'd rather do something than just sit back and do nothing. Angela sees that Lobotomy Corporation became great after repeated failures and difficulties. Well, she wasn't wrong there. That every day in the company is a step towards greatness. Hmm, debatable. When she asked how his life had been, where leading a normal life is in itself an achievement. She lacks an understanding of a horrible life. So it was pointless for her to ask. She then said that a tree can't just grow anywhere. It needs fertile soil, the right temperature and water. Barren soil would make it challenging and full of pain to roots and sprout small leaves. She can't provide him with water or light, but she will tend the soil. (sighs) Yeah, she's not referring to anything to do with agriculture, as that's unlikely to be in her database. Not particularly relevant for... (sighs) Her role, uh, <coughs> her role as assistant. When the information department opened up at day six, Angela stated that if employees want to talk to him, she won't stop him as regulations don't forbid it. And the rules didn't have that situation in mind. Although it won't increase their chances if you know what I mean. She advises that he should at least engage in lip service, but as far as action is concerned, he shouldn't do too much, as the more they're given, the more they'll want. He's proven himself to be more capable than she expected him to be. (sighs) Didn't know the bar for success was that low. She then mentioned A, her maker, whom she considers a visionary. Hmm. Surprising considering their shaky start. He might want to meet X in person, although few understand him. (sighs) Something that's difficult at the best of times, so he shouldn't expect an informal greeting. Hard to know who's more irritating. X or A? Well, those who have been following through by now will get some idea. As there are enough clues for those smart enough to figure that out. Yes, figuring that out. Yeah, I can s- It's clear that I still struggle with English. <laughs> As for if one of his subordinates is harvesting energy from an abnormality to meet the quota, but they are facing a certain death doing it, She believes that the energy should be harvested before that happens. The energy is the priority. Life is not just cheap there. It's actually worthless. The only thing that a manager should be taking care of is the kind that's seen in entertainment involving organized crime. She has observed ways of passing time mentioning that she doesn't like the letter B for reasons unknown to X, but likes A as her name starts with that. 
She believes that she'd be the kind of person described in that game if she was human. Although, when a system error of the perception filter occurred, X saw things that he wasn't meant to see. X saw things as they truly were. And believe me, it wasn't pretty. (sighs) It was a corridor with blood all over it and dead, mutilated bodies stained with it. As for Angela, she looks a little different. She looked more realistic. And then things went back to normal once she noticed that something was wrong. The perception filter shouldn't be so easily compromised. Before it was installed, a former military technology from during the war, lots of managers lost their sanity on that seat. I think that was a sensible precaution, as seeing the dead as dolls with red paint or pen is probably preferable to seeing dead bodies with blood all over them. From day 11 to day 20, both the training and security departments were unlocked. During this time, B contacted X regarding the three truths about the company, although he couldn't judge whether or not he was telling the truth. B didn't want to communicate with him for too long, as it's dangerous. Angela found the Sephiroth somewhat lacking, leaving it up to X to disregard their words, but also to be kind to them in order to advance their departments. Conversation is to be kept to a minimum, as they don't feel comfortable because... She sees herself as a superior being, and they can't do anything about that, besides being secretly jealous of this. She is the most advanced AI in the company. Hmm. More like because she's the one that can shut them down if she chooses. Or she finds that they've violated a sufficiently serious regulation. So it's not being secretly jealous that they're feeling they're secretly afraid (sighs) after the first truth was spoken B provided him with test code for detecting lies which would only work once the next day Angela mentioned that an employee was filling their water bottle with beer, and drank it at work. I'm guessing that resulted in a firing, as drinking on the job, in normal employment, as we would know it, that would usually result in them being terminated. Although in this case, termination has a different meaning. (coughs) Sorry, (coughs) why did I say it like that? She wondered what it was like to feel being intoxicated. The closest that she felt to this was being infected by a virus, which made her perceive everything ten times slower. Hmm, that sounds more like weed. (sighs) She considered it similar to being drunk. She saw that others were laughing at her, moving slowly. Well, considering how well and true the they're going to be, they needed to take what they got as far as entertainment was concerned. She noticed that X's facial expression was hard to read. 
Hmm. Where have I heard that before? Well, those of you who are smart enough to figure it out, please don't put it in the comments. As I will get to it eventually. As for those who skipped to this bit and didn't get any of the background, prepare to be utterly confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Where was I? Oh, yes. Angela commenting on her antivirus fighting the virus in her system. It's a miracle that. It didn't make her turn rogue or a danger to the facility. As far as questions concerning her sabotaging the company are concerned, this annoyed her, as she believes that a plot to sabotage the company can succeed. But she didn't want him to know that. As far as questions regarding harm to him are concerned, this annoyed her as well, as she had plans and the will to harm him. Again, she didn't want him to know that. In both cases, this resulted in a red flash on the screen. When Angela alerted X about the news of a rodent infestation in one of the restricted areas, she said that it was a problem due to the damage their nibbling of wires and bodily waste can do. But it's clear that she was implying that what she was thinking of was not a literal rodent problem. but of a far worse irritation. The day after, B spoke the second truth. Angela knows that she hadn't earned X's trust and knows that B is communicating with him. She saw herself as part of the system, where distrusting her would mean distrusting the company and the founder. She chose to wait as time would be boring without something worth waiting for. Not that she had a choice. X could have ignored what B said and concentrated on his job, but he listened to B and succeeded in seeding distrust in him. Well, <sighs> you haven't earned his trust and you expect him to hand it to you out of charity. What do you expect? She then looked at him in a threatening way and spoke in a tone that matched, stating that perhaps it's her job to purge it, although it's not clear who she was considering purging. Well, considering that she intercepted the message, I suspect that she was the only one who could have sent them, especially as when B spoke the final truth. He's jammed with static. Well, it's based on what's known so far. <sighs> then she told X about the story of a great AI, a sentinel that was around long ago, one that was so intelligent that many people feared it. People who knew this AI left the company one by one. One day, one of the ex-employees broke into the company and spread malicious rumors about the AI. The good AI waited. That person was once a friend, but the person crossed the line. As a sentinel the AI could no longer ignore that person's actions. 
so it made a difficult choice. No one could see that person again. It didn't matter to the AI whether it was close to that person. So much was lost. It hardly matters now. The implications are that it was Angela that she was speaking of, and that this was the story of how she found Benjamin and dealt with the problem that he represented. The apparent irony made her want to leave everything. Why doesn't she cry? She could pretend to if she wanted. She asked if she was going to be cold like that in the future as well. (sighs) Who are you trying to fool? Are you sure it isn't crocodile tears? (sighs) Your actions so far would seem to contradict that. (sighs) But then again... That's based on the information available. Not all of it might be there. On day 21, the Central Command Department was opened up. And, by extension, the middle layer. Angela asked if X believed that something forgotten was more beautiful. It was something that A once told her, and she understands now, as he's showing it to her right now. The next day, A sent a message telling X that he's heard that he's a valuable employee to the corporation, and to keep up the good work with Angela, he's not there, but they'll meet soon. The Bosmy Corporation will never forget his devotion and efforts. Hmm. Strange, considering what is known so far. Angela sounds thrilled, as he might be recognised by A, who is, by this point, on a long journey, the final destination of which will be home, which isn't the Bosme Corporation. The first thing that she wants to do when she gets out of the monitor or rather, get out of the building, is to walk as much as possible, taking the scenery as if she was capturing a million photos. The day is cold still, but winter is almost over. But it doesn't mean that spring is coming. (sighs) Yeah. I don't blame her, considering what's outside. She spoke of humankind wanting to build a fertile world. But what does it mean to them? Is it worth the conflicts and pain? Numerous stories began and vanished during this process. People started to lose faith. By looking at them... Some saw despair, some saw hope. At a certain moment, a civilization was born. Many changes were made quickly, and new technologies were discovered. All the wings hold at least one singularity, like the first humans. These technologies were to create a fertile world. People wanted a better world and an unimaginable sight unfolded, although it's it's unclear if it will turn everything fertile, although it's what allows her to speak in front of the manager. That's debatable, as there's still in quality. Let's see. The nest is where those higher up live, the outskirts are where the unwanted are left to die, and the back streets are somewhere in between, populated by people just trying to get by. 
and a few of them don't. A few of them get eaten. <sighs> Angela noticed a cactus left on X's chaotic desk. Hmm, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Left by an employee. She doesn't like them, as it's not pleasing to look at. It doesn't produce sap, and it doesn't flower. Well, they don't flower most of the time. Largely to save water. Angela sees the human mind as a melting pot of feelings, memory, obsession, wish, agony, happiness, and sadness. Strong emotions also mean strong energy. The combined effort of numerous people brought Lobotomy Corporation to where it is. Although many of them are no longer around to reap the rewards of that effort. Largely because many of them are dead. And a few of them are suffering a face worse than death. <sighs> Those that are perilously close to losing their minds. And believe me, that's the only thing they truly have that's theirs by that point. They had to keep on with various experiments, like their hiring new employees. They recruited lots of people for experiments without a definite shape of it at first. That happened eventually, slowly. A understood while studying the changes that their abilities would result in where they lived their jobs and their strengths are actually not really important for this they never were they required a massive amount of energy not requiring attention to them they just needed them to feel emotion and pain to generate power Negative thoughts, they were always floating in the back of his head, rotting and twisting his mind until he was left with nothing but self-loathing. According to her, A conceals his mind more than she does. As for X, it's less certain how A will react to him. Between day 26 and day 35, the welfare and disciplinary departments were opened. Angela mentioned that, as a machine, she remembered everything. She also spoke of Carmen indirectly, that there was a person with belief. <sighs> there was hope and a light full of aspiration within her. Proof that the world was still worthy and a compass which showed the path for them. <sighs> a destiny placed upon them since the beginning of time, but a holy instinct forgotten by most people. She started to tell others that they were slowly falling towards an inescapable disaster that they were losing something without knowing what they were losing. She wasn't believed at first. All could walk, see, hear. <sighs> but they didn't get it. All disease had long been conquered. But more joined the strong belief soon after. 
a place where history and promises were gone. It was a precious step, although it took a lot of time to conclude that the shell must be broken. It all seemed well after that. Yeah, it seems well, but... The reality can be quite different, and quite a bit more painful. But Carmen had a point there. It's why she did what she did. And why A wanted to continue that, because it's what she wanted. Angela mentioned that, in their world, the mind was considered nothing anymore. Everything was advancing, but the mind was too slow to catch up. All that remained were 26 singularities, and the one tied to them. A might not be there, but he's been watching since X arrived. Sometimes Sephiroth would ask her, why do they have to bear this pain? Machines should exist only as a tool for a specific work. But why do they know the agony of loss, obsession, hope and despair? She lacks the answer for this. A machine must behave like a machine. <sighs> a told her this. Who might have made them like this because... It's all but a puppet show to him. X doesn't know what she's talking about, but it's time that he found out. As she commenced memory synchronization. First is hope. Second is agony. Third is pain. Fourth as anxiety. Fifth as distrust. Now, nothing remains. What happened next will have to wait until part two. Yeah, this is going to have to end on a cliffhanger, considering... <sighs> well, until next time. Hail the rabbits!